Want to know one of the single greatest curveballs I was thrown when opening a coffee truck? Commissary. The commissary agreement is it took me for a loop. Let me tell you. So in this video, I want to kind of break this down for you folks. What is a commissary? How do you go about getting commissary agreements? What questions do you need to ask? Uh, how to find a commissary? and maybe even how to find a commissary for free. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me. If you're new to me, uh, my name is Vincent. I own Green Joe Coffee School. We're rebranding from Green Joe Coffee Truck. I own a coffee truck school. Uh, what I do is help people start coffee trucks. Um, I'm eight years in the business now. I started off with a coffee trailer. I've done coffee trucks, carts, built them out myself. Um, went on to do a shop, roaster. I started with no experience and I'm 100% self-funded. So kind of a bootstrap way to get into business, but I always think it kind of leads into uh, a more profitable business, business when you have less debt. So if you're interested in learning more about my school, greenjoecoffeetruck.com is where you can find that. I'll put that in the uh, comments section below. Moving forward, so in today's video, really what I want to do is break down what is a commissary, how do you go about finding them, and what are some of the questions you should ask when you're when you're out searching for them? So, uh, as a definition, the commissary is basically like a base camp. It really it's made to help resupply and service your unit, and also allow to clean your unit uh, as well. So things like getting fresh water to it, potable fresh water, being able to dump gray water from your unit, some storage, possibly things like ice or refrigeration storage dry food storage. Also in some counties, uh, they'll require that you store your entire mobile food truck at the commissary unit. So it just kind of depends on code and regulation. So let's kind of break that down. Okay, so in some counties, and you have to read your county to specifically find out what they want for commissaries, but in some counties, they allow for any permitted restaurant, as long as they can provide the services that you need to your truck to be able to act as a commissary. Now, not every code and regulation allows for this. Some counties, some cities will force you to go to a registered commissary kitchen. They are permitted as a commissary kitchen. They have to follow certain guidelines to meet that criteria. And so this, the county says you can only go to them. Okay, so ultimately your health inspector, they're gonna let you know whether or not it has to be a specific commissary kitchen or if it could be any restaurant that acts as a commissary, okay? Now, for those of you that find that you have very specific and stringent code and regulations on your commissary, you also may possibly be able to use a out-of-the-county commissary for your kitchen. You'll have to discuss that with your health inspector, but that might be an option if you find that for whatever reason, it's a little bit too tight, too stringent for code regulations, and it just might work better to have an out-of-county commissary. But for those of you not in that situation, that's the first distinction that I, I want to make immediately is what is what specifically counts as a commissary? Can I use any restaurant that will meet my services? And if you can, this is really going to open up the doors for you because you're gonna be able to use a lot more restaurants or um, I call them allies, but you'll have a lot more options when it comes to picking your commissary, okay? The first thing that I'm gonna do when I'm looking for a commissary kitchen is I wanna just ask the health inspector if they have a list. So that's the first thing. So they're gonna send me a list, I'm gonna put it into an Excel spreadsheet and put the phone numbers down and start working pricing. When I call these folks up, usually I'm trying to find out a few things. What I wanna know is, one, can I fill up my, my fresh water? Can I dump my gray water? Those are the two big things I like to find out about. I also want to I want to know about storage. Some counties require you to store your food truck there. If that's the case, especially for you folks up north, do you have an outlet that I can plug into at night? Uh, maybe I need to leave a heater next to my espresso machine to prevent it from freezing over. Maybe I'm storing milk in my unit for the next morning when I get up to go and, and I want my refrigerator plugged in overnight. So one of the questions that you want to ask that commissary is whether or not they have outside electricity. The other thing that I'm really curious about is ice. You know, in, in uh, my coffee trucks, the ice machine one is just too large. I didn't have the footprint for it. And even if I did get a smaller one, a lot of times they hog up a lot, of a lot of electricity. You're looking at 10 amps, 15 amps, and I can use that either for making more coffee 
or maybe even something like an HVAC, you know, having some nice air conditioning. So I would prefer to use a ice machine at my commissary if, if I can have it. And so that's one of the things that I want to look into when I'm looking for a commissary is do you have an ice machine? If you don't, do you have the availability for me to install an ice machine later on down the road and seeing that if that's an option. So the, the first thing that I'm, I'm going to want to do is I'm going to open up Google and all I'm going to search for immediately here, let me just move this out of the way, excuse me, um, is I'm, I'm typing in commissary kitchen in my town. So I'm here in Albuquerque, I have Albuquerque commiss commissary kitchen, it looks like there's a magic cookery commissary kitchen, PCH commissary kitchen. So we've got a couple different commissary kitchens. I want to give these folks a call and find out what the cost is. I'm going to move down. There's another one down here, abqfoodtruck.com. Looks like they have a commissary kitchen. I don't know what the kitchen door is, but I'm going to give them a call anyway. So let's uh, South Valley Economic Development Center. There's a food industry incubation program. Cool. So essentially, I'm going to start making a list of all these commissary kitchens. I'm going to write down their phone numbers and their emails. And I'm going to start checking in on things like pricing and some of the, the resources they have available. So that's option number one. Now, option number two, if, I, if I'm able to use permitted restaurants, that's going to open me up to things like coffee roasters or what I'm going to consider allies, people that I'm doing business with anyhow. And in my industry, that's going to be coffee roasters and bakeries. So those are probably the first two that I'm going to start looking into and finding out if they have things like a commercial kitchen available. So here I have Red Rock, Red Rock Roasters in, in Albuquerque. Um, shout out to Red Rocks. They have phenomenal coffee. Michael Thomas, one of my favorites. Villa Miriam. Um, if you're ever in Albuquerque and you want to try one of the most phenomenal coffee roasters you'll ever have in your life, go to Villa Miriam. They're absolutely wonderful. So these are the places that I'm going to start reaching out to. This is not going to be my first question right out of my mouth, right? I'm not going to just start off with that. Hey, do you do commissary kitchens? No, you usually want to kind of maybe ease into it first. First kind of ask about wholesale prices, maybe set up a cupping, start building a relationship a little bit first before you start talking about going into business with them, okay? And then once you start getting a good feel for them and you feel like they're going to be a good candidate to be an ally in your business, that's when you want to really start opening up the conversation to uh, commissary kitchens. Going back, coffee roasters and also bakeries. are Both of those are going to be a, a great option, allies that you can use um, for commercial kitchens for commissaries. Uh, Planty Sweetie, they, they're a phenomenal uh, pastry set up next to them at the farmer's market. A um, couple ones, Budke Bakehouse. Oh, if you're ever in Albuquerque, try them. There's a reason they have 4.9 out of 260 reviews. They're absolutely phenomenal. Now, if they don't have that, the next thing I'm going to start moving towards is kind of like associates, I guess you would call them. Um, so here we have burrito trucks. These are people that you have a potential of doing business with, but you know maybe not necessarily. They're not competing with your business. You know, a burrito truck doesn't necessarily sell coffee. You don't necessarily sell burritos. So it's one of those companies where you can be like, well, you know, if I'm setting up, I'll let you know, and then you can come set up next to me. So I'll start looking into like burrito trucks in Albuquerque and see if they have commissaries because a lot of these burrito trucks also have uh, restaurants. And so, you know, they, they can act as commissaries as well. When I owned my coffee shop, I was a commissary for a smoothie truck and also for a, a burrito truck. So um, we acted as a commissary for those two. And the beautiful thing about that is you kind of get this little community going, you know, when you, you know, when you're on the phone, first of all, with your event coordinator, you ask, hey, uh, do you have a smoothie or do you have anybody else set up? And they'll tell you no. And you say, well, I have a good idea for a smoothie truck. You want me to give them a call? And so sometimes you can, you know, you can get, you know, your buddy in on the gig as well. And then there are other times, and I've done this in the past, is I'll get an event coordinator that calls me up and they want to do catering. Say they want to buy, you know, 100 cups of coffee off of me. Well, then I'll ask them, well, what about burritos? Have you, have you looked into that? And they said, no, that's, that's the next phone call. And I go, well, I, I can also do burritos. And then I'll price them the burritos that my burrito truck gives them to me at wholesale. And then I just mark them up. So um, I'll call up my burrito truck and I'll say, hey, on the 18th, I need 50 burritos. Can you give them to me at four bucks a piece? And they say, yeah, of course. So then I tell the other company, okay, well, you know, I can get them to you at six bucks a piece, okay? You know, it's only an extra hundred bucks, but still it's an extra hundred bucks. All you got to do is stop by the burrito place or have the burrito place drop them off to you 
uh, before you do the catering that morning. So kind of think about that when you're establishing these relationships. Like what, you know, what other relationships are going to benefit me in the long run? And for me, it was baked goods, uh, burritos. The smoothie truck really benefited me because a lot of times we'd set up right next to each other. She knew about a lot of really good events that I didn't know about, and I knew a lot about uh, a lot of good events that she didn't know about. So we benefited off each other because of, of, of our knowledge in, in what events were going on in the city. So keep that in mind. Now, if all that stuff fails and you know, you're still having a hard time, or maybe you wanna even consider trying to get um, a free commissary, not all permitted kitchens are retail restaurants. You have nonprofits that they serve food and they're permitted by the city as a, a kitchen, but they're not open to retail restaurant. They, you know, a good example of that would be like a homeless shelter or maybe even your church. Um, for me, I'm, I'm a veteran and so I have a, have a close tie to veteran organizations. And one of the ways that you can get some free commissary space is maybe by saying, okay, during like a good example is a church, if the church has you know Sundays for example where they want to serve people maybe you can um, you can host coffee or bring them coffee on Sunday and uh, and give their patrons free coffee in exchange for a, a space in their kitchen so that's a, a kind of a wheel and deal you scratch my back I'll scratch your type of scenario that you might be able to do with nonprofits and that helps them because then they're not having to go out and buy coffee for their events and it helps you because you're not having to go out and pay commissary kitchen space on a monthly basis. Okay, so that's that's about it that I have for you guys on commissaries. You know, try to look at how you're gonna fill your water, dump your water, plug in at night, ice machines, inside storage. Um, look at what your potential allies might be. Um, consider what your potential associates might be, people that can scratch your back along the way. And if you know your city allows for any permitted rest, uh, any permitted kitchen, consider your nonprofits as well. That's that might be an underutilized tool for you. My name is Vincent. This is with Green Joe Coffee School. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any questions, feel free to either throw them in the comment box 